You may be fed up with all the contradictory advice out there about how to stop binge eating. There's one camp who are telling you, you need to be eating more, binge eating is associated with restriction, so don't restrict. Eat more, eat when you have an urge to binge, and it will calm down, your eating will regulate, and you will no longer have urges to binge. And then there's another camp who say, this is an addiction. This is to do with certain types of food hijacking our reward pathways and we can't control ourselves around them. So what we actually need to do is to cut these foods out because when we're no longer eating sugar, let's say, our cravings for them tend to reduce. So this is the answer. And here's how I want to pull those two together. I think that there are actually two types of urges to binge. One is like a primal urge. It comes from the hunger system right down in the base of our brain. And these primal urges can be triggered even when our bodies are full of food because it's monitoring how much you've eaten over a longer period of time. So people often experience this urge, these primal urges, when they come off a diet. And they can also experience them when they are planning to diet because our brains anticipate. So if they think restriction is coming, even if it's not here yet, it can ramp up those very primal urges to eat that feel overwhelming and then it's hard to feel satisfied and you end up binging. Now with primal urges, often we do need to eat more. That is the solution. For some people, binge eating isn't even really the problem. It's the solution to trying to restrict. The problem for these people is actually restriction, not binge eating. But this isn't everybody. So I did experience those primal brain urges to binge because I was always trying to diet. I just was never very good at it. So I didn't really feel like the restriction fully applied to me because I wasn't able to keep up any level of actual restriction. And that brings me on to the second type of binge urge, which is the one that is it's related to our dopamine systems. It's that feeling we get when we're chasing, chasing, chasing. It's that one more, one more, and, and yet it never really feels like you hit that satisfaction point, and then you just end up feeling too full and you feel a bit sick. Now, if this is you, and this is related to your dopamine systems, chances are you will see this showing up in other places in your life. So for me, that looks like constant distraction. This video is actually inspired because I feel like I've been in this kind of dopaminergic chasing system all week and it's shown up in my the way I'm distracting myself and my scrolling and even with food we live in a culture at the moment that has so many ways of trying to hijack this system so we see it on social media with scrolling reels are notorious it keeps us in that seeking behavior it can show up with watching television gambling pornography all of these things are presented and packaged as well in a way to try to hook us in. And once we're on that hook, it's very hard to just pull ourselves off it because it actually hurts to break the dopamine cycle. There's been a lot of talk recently about ADHD and many people are identifying as having ADHD. And I do think a lot of these people do have ADHD. And I think that some of those people are just, they have dopamine systems that can be dysregulated by our environment that we live in now. And the difference with somebody whose brain has ADHD is that they can't just simply break the cycle, right? The brain is wired like this. But for other people, this is changeable and they don't even realize it because their behaviors, because their dopamine's all over the place and their behaviors are that of somebody with ADHD, they think I have ADHD. And it's one of the reasons why in assessments, it's so important that these symptoms go right back into childhood. So I could say that I'm someone that as a child, I used to read quite a lot. And now I actually find it quite difficult to concentrate on reading a book. I can do it sometimes, not as much as I would like to, because I think my brain has been changed by the way I consume information now. And then the question becomes, how do we break the cycle? And this is what the people who are saying, you need to give up sugar, you should be eating all whole foods, you need to stay away from all the foods that trigger this system. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to show you a way to break the cycle. The challenge is that if you're somebody, especially with a history of dieting, who has this primal brain reaction to restriction, cutting those foods out, yes, might reduce the craving for them. After the initial discomfort, the craving for them does reduce. But now your primal brain might be getting agitated because it's perceiving it 
as restriction. And at some point, you get a primal brain urge and signals coming through. Now, if you're someone for whom this doesn't happen and you wanna cut out certain foods so as not to trigger this cycle with them, go ahead. But for me, I often found that my binging became a hundred times worse after I had just tried to cut something out. Now there is hope for those of us that have adaptable dopamine circuits. Now I think that's me. I think I'm someone with a dopamine circuit that is vulnerable to being hijacked. And previously years ago, I might have described myself as someone who's got a bit of an addictive personality. And I also have evidence of how I've been able to break the cycle at times. I have shared before, either here or on the podcast, I'm not sure, but I have shared before that one of the things that I used to do sometimes after a period of binging that would help break the cycle was I would have a day with no distractions, where I wasn't listening to podcasts, where I wasn't watching TV. And it was uncomfortable. Because here's what it feels like when you are in a dopamine chasing cycle and you break it, sometimes it can feel like you wanna crawl out of your own skin. And that, that feeling that happens when you stop is part of the thing that drives you to continue the behavior because when you stop, it's gonna feel very uncomfortable. If you think this is you around food, you will see this cycle playing out in other areas of your life, not just food, because this is a brain reward circuitry system. So if it's only with the food, chances are it's not this or not to the extent that I'm talking about. So there is hope. <laughs> and so what I'm offering here is that in order for this not to rule your life around food, you need to practice breaking the cycle. But don't practice with food to begin with. Because if you practice with food, you may end up in a fight with your appetite and triggering the other kinds of urges. And you might be in a double whammy and then you're gonna feel helpless and you're gonna hate yourself for it. Hopefully not if you've been practicing self-compassion, but I know many people are gonna blame themselves for that. So I did one thing last night that really helped break the cycle and I can feel it, I feel different today. So not last night, the last two nights, I've been struggling to get myself to bed because it's been uncomfortable to turn off distractions because I'm in, I'm in like my, my <laughs> because I'm in my craving brain. So the two nights prior to last night, I was in my bed scrolling before I went to sleep, scrolling, scrolling, and going way past when I would normally turn out the light. And so yesterday morning, I was like, why, why am I doing this? And I could see I was caught up in this chasing thing. So I actually, I messaged a friend of mine and I just, I told her about it. She's a friend who does have ADHD. Uh, she gets it. <laughs> and I told her about it and I said, I want to make a commitment to you tonight that I am not going on social media when I get into bed. There was something about making sort of that intention and that commitment to another person that really helped me. I haven't had to use somebody all the time, but it's making a commitment to go, okay, where can I break it? Where is this pattern showing up where I have the least resistance? If you struggled with food for a long time and that feels like the big problem, you're gonna have the most resistance there. Least resistance might be scrolling on the phone. It's gonna feel uncomfortable, but maybe you're less emotionally attached or not to what you're scrolling on your phone. And it's being aware that it's going to feel very uncomfortable. If you're anything like me, like, it feels so uncomfortable. But when you know why you're feeling uncomfortable and you can say to yourself, boy, this feels so uncomfortable because I'm breaking this cycle, then it can start to feel more possible to feel that. So it's twofold, really. It's one, recognizing that you're in this chasing cycle, and two, finding the weakest link, the weakest place where you can break the cycle. Notice where it's playing out elsewhere because chances are your attention will be on the food if that's the most distressing piece for you. Here's the great thing with food. Because we play out our cycles with food, we can work on these cycles in other areas of our lives and then it makes the food a little bit easier to manage. So I, I have a favor to ask and if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know I don't do this. I don't ask this on my channel because it's kind of annoying when YouTubers do this. But if you are somebody who gets value out of this content, if you would consider subscribing <laughs> and also particularly like hitting the bell icon below because what that does is it notifies you when I put a video up. It seems to be that YouTube is penalizing this kind of content because it can't tell what is good content and what is misinformation. 
So the more people that are notified about videos, the more the video spreads, and then YouTube will show it to newer people, and hopefully people for whom this will actually help might find this content. And if you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine too. Either way, I hope this was helpful, and I will see you on the next video.